Hello, welcome to Mountain Craft Studio. My name's Christine. Come on in and I'll show you what I've been working on. Well, as you can see, I have received my Maria Selby Humphrey uh, sampler back from Total Framing, and I think they did an absolutely fantastic job. I wanted a frame that would offset uh, the log cabin walls that it will be hanging on. Um, I didn't want it to, to blend in, so I didn't want just plain wood. Uh, so I knew I wanted something, you know, with some color to it. Um, but I think this is absolutely perfect. It picks up the colors from the from the sampler itself beautifully. And it, it just, I could not be more pleased with it. I think it's fantastic. I'm so anxious to get this hanging in the cabin. I think it'll be wonderful. Love it, love it. If you're interested in, in knowing the details on that, um, it is in one of my uh, videos, probably I think the first one um, that I gave the details on what it is stitched on and stitched with. I'm sure uh, it was whatever it was called for though. I don't think I made any substitutions on this one at all. And also, in the same box, I received uh, my sampler that my friend Jenny made for me. Let's see if I can get this to just stand here for a second. There we go. So, uh, Jenny uh, and another friend were teasing about, uh, this was pre-pandemic, right? Before the pandemic, uh, that they were going to claim their rooms at my cabin um, by putting up some kind of sign or something with their names on it. And uh, it was a kind of a running gag for a while. Well, then the pandemic hit and of course they couldn't visit and uh, couldn't go down there with me. And in the meantime, Jenny, who is the most social person, most outgoing, always go, 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 go um, kind of person. Uh, her being stuck at home, I can't even, I couldn't even imagine. It was like caging, you know, a wild animal or something I would think. and. Come to find out, she had been sitting there stitching this for me um, the whole time, along with doing other things, I'm sure. Um, but it just, it means that much more to me because knowing, um, knowing Jenny, it just, it fits her perfectly. The sentiment at the bottom, she changed to proving a patience that is mine to stab something 1,000 times. Uh, it just, it's hilarious. So I think they did a fantastic job at told framing. It took us a while to come up with the right frame, but this one's perfect. It's colorful. It's it's uh, all about Jenny. Jenny likes loud colors and, and um, kind of the opposite of me. I like dull, muted <laughs> colors and we, it's a running gag for, for us. But this is going to hang in my guest room, which doubles as my uh, secondary stitching room uh, when I don't want to watch um, golf or... Uh, anything that my husband's watching. Uh, but anyway, looking forward to this. Um, I'm, I'll send him up this evening to make sure that this gets hung in its proper spot. Looking forward to it. Uh, so uh, so if you watch my last video, you know I went in for back surgery. Um, how long ago it's been there at least two weeks or something like that and finally today's the first day that I can get up out of a chair without wanting to scream 
So I thought it would be a good day to get, uh, to get back into the swing of things. Um, I have been doing some stitching. I've been doing a lot more planning and getting, you know, projects lined up than I have been actual doing things. But um, I did do a little bit on my, uh, my Quaker alphabet sampler, the Forget Me Not sampler, which is, um, which I'm using to do the Simple Harmony stitch along. Uh, and I'm almost done. So this will be, I'm on the last big motif here and then I'll fill in the smaller ones that go on the top. And this will be the, the front and the sides of the piece. And then it will be ready to assemble. I'm excited. Um, I um, also received some brilliant ideas on finishing some of the inside um, Thing, so I will show a lot more of that next next time I film because I think it'll I'll have everything ready and, and be able to put it all together and show show it to you. It's going to be a neat neat finish I think. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I also started. Um, I talked about starting this one earlier. My goodness, the cat hair on that is is insane. Bless her. My cats. I don't know if yours are, but my cats are shedding like crazy. Like they. <laughs> It's nuts. But anyway, I'm working on Heartstring Samplery, My Wish. It's a beautiful pattern. Very much, it's not um, for me, but it's very much the style of who I am making this for. The colors are just fantastic. And so I did get a pretty good start on that. I had to take a break from the Forget me not sampler, I needed color. And the black and white just gets to be kind of monotonous after a while and I find myself wanting to fall asleep. So, um, especially with the painkillers. So it wasn't working out real well. I would, So I decided to switch to this and I, I need, this is gonna be a Christmas gift so I need to get this finished. So I'll be sticking that into my rotation of projects every month until I get it done. Um, and then I also took some time out to work on the Needfuls project by the Scarlet House. And I did get the, this one finished. And you'll notice that, or you may not, but I changed the name to Brooks and the year to 1843. And that is because I have a great, great, great grandmother uh, Fanny Brooks, who was a weaver. And so she, her husband died young, leaving her with seven children to raise. And so she took in weaving as a, in, to, you know, survive. And uh, I know for a fact that she was doing it in 1843 in Ohio. So it was perfect. Um, I just love this. This is precious to me. So it was unusual for a woman to be a weaver in 18. 43 in Ohio, but she had her grandfather, her great-great-grandfather, uh, and her great-great-great-grandfather were all uh, professional weavers. And I feel like she had access to the, number one, the loom, the knowledge, and that sort of thing. So I do believe that she took in uh, more of the fancy weaving uh, than just the normal thing that a woman would do during that time period. So I... I love to be able to have this and use it as a um, little remembrance. I started on the next one, which I'm I'm doing. It's the, the one with the quilt blocks on it. The colors in all of these are gorgeous. I love these. I could do 20 things with these. Um, I'm definitely gonna do four on that piece of fabric. I don't know if I'll end up doing, I'm gonna do the first four. I don't know if I'll do the the last one with the buttons, we'll see. Lord knows I have plenty of buttons. But we'll see how it goes as I go along. I love this fabric. This is the, I believe it's Baked Clay by Fox and Rabbit. And I, I just, I love how that's turning out. So I'll definitely be getting more of that to, to use on something else at some point, because that's fantastic. Then I have, uh, I have made plans to start this, this is a fun one. So I've mentioned in other videos that I have a friend, uh, 
that uh, sometimes seeks out old um, textiles and um, cult tops and things like that. And she often sells it on Instagram. And so uh, Amy recently had um, a listing for, for this panel um, on Instagram. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. How cool is this? So I'm going to make a pillow out of this for the master bedroom because I just think that is so cool. But the reason I knew I had to have it is because it matches, right? Look at that. So this is a uh, Teresa Kogut's above all sampler it has the man and the woman in the heart, just like this does. And I thought, oh, that is just too cool. So, and I love the colors that's in, that are in this one. So I am going to switch out some of the colors on the sampler. I've chosen some, some teals to go with the, all the other samples. And it'll be, actually it'll be, when, once I start going through the colors, I realize I really just have to substitute the reds with the teals and it will match. How fun is that? So, so that's a fun project that I've added to my million to-do list. <laughs> I did find um, Fiber on a Whim Cappuccino. I'm going to do it on 36 count Cappuccino. I love that. That look, it's getting kind of blown out with all the lights in here. But pretty, pretty. That'll be fun. I'm in no big rush. It's just for the master bedroom. So that'll be kind of a long term when I'm wanting something different to stitch on project. And that's pretty much it as far as stitching goes. Uh, cross stitching anyway. Um, but speaking of uh, cross stitching, I have the Blackbird Designs fabric that just came out, the threads that bind. I bought a bunch of it. <laughs> this is the, I want to say these are the fat halves. Yeah, feels like it. Um, because I knew I wanted to make a quilt and I want to make a quilt for this same room that my uh, Jenny's sampler is going to go in. Um, I have a a bed that is, it's not, it's bigger than a twin, but smaller than a full that I've made a custom mattress for. So I, I, um, I need a quilt that actually fits it perfectly. Um, you can't just go out and buy one because it's kind of that in between. So I thought this would be perfect. And I looked through my hundred books of <laughs> quilt, uh, patterns before I finally found one that I really, really love. And it's an oldie, but a goodie. So this is the Miss Rosie's quilt collection. I don't know if this is still available or not. This was put out at least 15 years ago, maybe more. I know I've had it forever. Um, and I'm going to do the Amadeus quilt. This is what it looked like for theirs. And I'm going to swap out, swatch that, swap out some of the colors so that the reds will be blues and, and that sort of thing because I noticed that the values of the colors were definitely different so the the blues and the purples stand out much more than the red so i'm going to swap the colors around but that's essentially what it's going to look like once i'm finished i like those i like those colors i love the the pattern of course i need it an odd size so i have to redo all the math <laughs> but that's okay i think i can do it uh it's gonna be fantastic. I am gonna to have to put another little border around it, a three inch border, just to make sure that it actually covers everything that I want it to cover. Um, but that's gonna be a fun project. I did go through, I, I don't always like how a quilt turns out if I use just one um, collection of, of fabric. They're too matchy matchy for me. I like a scrappier look. And so I did go through my um, my stash and I pulled out complementary fabrics that will break that up a little bit and give it more of a, um, of a scrappy vibe, I'm hoping. Um, 
So I think that that's going to be fun. Looking forward to doing that. I haven't started stitching it yet. I haven't started cutting it out yet because cutting is still an activity that my lower back doesn't want to get into yet. Um, but while I'm doing that with those fabrics, I'm also going to make one of these. So I've had this on my to-do list for ages. This is the maker station. Let's see if I can get that close enough for you to see. Lily Ella Stitchery, the mini maker station is what it is. And it's just one of those armrest patterns. This one's really cool because it has a, a metallic uh, thing that can you can put at the top that will you can throw your pins, needles, and, and scissors in. And I've had all of this for ages. Um, but now I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in those matching fabrics so that I can have it um, on my chair in that room. Too. I love the Blackbird color collections. They are absolutely fantastic. So that's going to look so pretty. And I love Blackbird so much that I have noticed I have two of these. Uh, I bought one when it first came out, which was many moons ago. And then I bought one again recently, um, thinking that I would jump right on that. And I haven't started either one of them yet, but it is in my, it's in my top 10. Let's put it that way. Uh, I think I want to do um, some of them. I think I want to take some of them, the motives and just make something else with it too. But if you do not have a Little Birds sampler pattern yet, and you think you would like to have one, uh, in the comments below, just say, leave me a comment that says something about birds, and I will enter you into the drawing that I will pull next, in, during my next floss tube. Um, make sure you do all the right things. Don't say giveaway or freebie or any of that kind of stuff, and uh, make sure you're over 18, and uh, I will send this out to you because I don't need two of them. And I'd love to be able to share the joy of the Blackbird. Love all the Blackbird stuff. Uh, and since we're speaking of sewing, um, I signed up for, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this already. I signed up for the Sew Along to make this little sewing case. It's the Flora Supply Case from Clover and Violet. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for ages, about the same length of time I've been wanting to make the little maker station, but um, but I need this, I feel. Uh, I think it's a perfect little um, case for if you want to do English paper piecing or if you have a really a small um, cross-stitch project you want to take, it would work for that as well. It actually has um, directions for small, medium, and large, so you can make it as big as or as small as you would like. And I had a bunch of leftover blocks from my Joe Morton uh, quilt, the s'mores quilt. I'll insert a picture of that so that you can see it. But I have all these leftovers and I thought, wouldn't these be perfect for making that pieced cover? So that is my plan. Of course, they're not the right size, but that doesn't matter. I can figure that out. And I then will use, this is some of the old, old, old Blackbird fabric called, it was Wild Rose. I don't remember how long ago it's been since this came out, but it's been a, lot, a long time, I know. I'm gonna use this for the, to line all the interior, the pockets and that sort of stuff. And then this is a fabric that I've chosen that looks good with it to make the little pocket, zipper pocket part. I don't know who this is. It doesn't say. Uh, but I gotta get started on that. So that is a sew along that's going for the next three weeks. If you had started this two days ago, this is Wednesday, I think. Yes, it's Wednesday. Um, it started two days ago. If you are interested in doing that, I think you go ahead and still sign up the, and you're not going to be behind any. It goes for three weeks and she will send you the instructions of what to do each of those three weeks. All you need to do is, is order the pattern and get going on it. These are, um, these types of things, I love to make these. I actually, at one point, many moons ago, um, stocked up on a bunch of fabrics. My plan was to make bags and sell them because I do enjoy it, but uh, life got in the way and, and other things um, happened. And so I still have a stash of, of fabric to work with. So. <laughs> so it'd be nice to actually get to use some of them. Let's see, uh, what else did I want to tell you about? Oh, I know, 
the so we're kind of moving into the acquisitions phase of the of the floss tube and I really wanted to highlight I bought a rug and it is a fantastic rug um, I bought it after watching a video which I will link below you need to watch the video even if you are interested in buying rugs it's just really really interesting so this was a put out by business insider it was a um, right before the Russian invasion of Ukraine is when they filmed it and then once the invasion happened, they updated the, the, the film a little bit. And it describes how this Ukrainian family is working to preserve this style of weaving, you know, for the next generation and that sort of thing. So it's really interesting and just to see the process of what they do. Um, but anyway, they mentioned somewhere uh, that they had an Etsy shop. And I, when I watched this back in March or April, decided I was going to go and look at it. And I, I ordered a rug. And knowing that I may or may not get the rug because there's a war going on there. And they may get, you know, uh, they may have to evacuate, go somewhere else to be, you know, and wouldn't be able to take all of their weaving paraphernalia with them. Um, it's not real easy to move one of these big looms. So um, I didn't know if I was, you know what was going on, but I wanted to support them and their efforts of what they were doing there. And so um, I finally received the rug this week and I am beyond thrilled. I'll insert a picture here. It is made uh, with natural wools. The I love the different colors. It reminds me of my Shetland sheep. Uh, I don't know exactly the breed of sheep that it's from, but I think that I saw or read somewhere that it's it's Scandinavian sheep so I'm thinking Gotland or a breed like that probably um it's beautiful I love it right now it's sitting I keep looking over here because I have it sitting over here I did I my pets were a little too interested in it and I didn't want them messing it messing with it so I brought it out to the studio and I, I think that's where it's going to stay for a while um then what else do I have oh my collectible of the week. I decided instead of just showing you one little collectible, I'm going to talk about storage uh, in general, using antiques to actually store things with. And so I have gone out, I've made my way out of the house a couple of times and have done a little bit of thrifting, a little bit of antiquing, went to a, an auction. Um, so I have a few things to show. Uh, first off is the, um, I found some candlesticks at an antique mall. They were clearly listed as candlesticks. And I said, hmm. And so <laughs> if you take them upside down, you can actually put something in the middle. So this is that, and it will hold your tools as well. This is actually an idea that I read, I want to say probably in a Fonz and Porter quilting magazine a million years ago. Um, but each, this is just the tomato that you can buy nowadays from Dritz. Um, any Joann's will have them. And then you can write the needle size onto each one of these little quadrants here, right? And then when you put your needle in there, you'll know what it is. Because you know how you sometimes you'll sew and you only need your leather needle for one project. Well, you don't want to throw it away. Um, but you can put them in here and you'll know what they are. All right. And so this one's going to sit right next to my sewing machine. So I will have those handy. And I have this one, which I'm thinking would be perfect. I'll get another tomato and I'll have my hand sewing needles in this one. Um, because, and I'll know whether what size it is, 24, 26, 28 on the tapestry, or whether it's, you know, a quilting needle or a sharp or, or whatever. So I thought that was a fun find and it wasn't, these weren't expensive. It worked out perfectly. Love them. Um, and then speaking of needles, I have found, this is a little um, Clark's sewing little tip box. It has a little girl on the front, very cute. Antiquey little, she's having a little tea party with her dollies which is very cute. The inside was a 
Clark's spool cotton box. And I noticed that it would fit needles perfectly. So this is my, all my little unused needle box. I have a large box. I have actually I have two large boxes. The, uh, the large box at the bottom holds patterns, sewing patterns, and then the next box holds a lot of needles and other stuff. Um, but then I plan on this box will sit on top of it's creating a stack. And this one now will have just the needles and I'll have other stuff in the middle box. Okay. Love that. I was happy to find that. Uh, something else I found that I thought was interesting. This tin, got this in, a, in another thrift antique store, and it looks like Berlin work to me. It looks like that um, Victorian, right, stitching that was all the rage there for a while. But this is, it's tin. It's actually, it's not, right? Actually, the top sounds like cardboard or something. Um, but it's actually, I just thought it was so fun. So I'm using this to store vintage spools of thread in. And you're thinking, Christine, why are you keeping vintage spools of thread? Well, I actually use them for basting. Um, so if it's something that it's gonna get torn out again, right? Um, I will use this. Sometimes vintage thread, you know, is still pretty strong. Some This one's strong, I can't break it. Um, Sometimes it isn't. And so you don't want to really use some of this vintage thread in your sewing projects. I certainly don't want to put it in a in a quilt or in a um, bag that I'm making or anything like that. But I will use it for something that I'm going to rip that back out. Um, it definitely comes, comes in handy for that. So that's what I use it for. Uh, and what else? We have one more thing up here on the table. So this, I wanted to show you, this is a crate. You can find all kinds of crates out there. Um, this one happened to be for a knitting machine from a zillion years ago. It's the Gerhardt Standard uh, Knitting Machine Company. It actually has a picture of the knitting machine on the side. But I found out, I figured out one day that it actually fits my um, project bags perfectly. I can put them in there, stand them up, and they fit just, just great. So I have that kind of stuck away in the house uh, so that they're all kind of neat. I like finding things like that. Um, I don't, I try not to do plastic at all, um, if at all possible. If there's any way I can use a basket or a box or something wooden or something reusable, um, I will do that. I'm just not a huge, huge fan of plastic and I never have been. It's just not, it doesn't appeal to me. Um, it's not my vibe. Now, there are things that I do use for plastic. I'm sitting here looking at a bunch of quilting rulers. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't want those to be uh, wooden or something. You wouldn't be able to see through them. But anyway, um, but as far as decorating and storage and pieces and things like that, I do try not to just go, um, go with the latest, plastic device or whatever that's that happens to be popular um and then I know that there's some of you that are chomping at the bit and wanting to see something else that I've gotten recently but you're just gonna have to hold on we're gonna go for a walk okay well this uh I went to an auction recently uh four miles down the road from where my house is uh on 4th of July, actually, they had a lot of primitives and things that they were auctioning off that day. And I managed to snag this Richardson's Embroidery Silks box. It's a, or case, I guess I should call it. It's, it's made, looks like it's made of oak. It has, it's pretty neat. It has these drawers that are actually boxes. So it's, it's cardboard that they were made out of and some of them are starting to to come loose some of them have someone's already taken all of those dividers out um it's neat though that if you read all of the little someone was definitely using it in their um sewing room of little labels so what 
um, I don't really want to store anything in this. I know that this, there's no way that this is acid free. Um, so I don't want to put any of my fabrics or my, um, flosses or anything directly on that. Um, I just don't believe that that is a good idea, especially for something that you're going to sit there and leave for a very long time. So I decided I wanted to line it with some acid free paper. Well, I have a photo that I've kept for years and years. I've got a, had it stashed away on my Pinterest of these old fabrics that are on the outside of these boxes. I'll put it in here. And I just love that look. I love, love, love that look. So I was trying to find some papers that looked a little bit like that. I haven't come up with the exact look, but I think I'm close enough. So I, these are some Italian papers that are lovely. So each box will have its own different design, or, or each tray, I should say. Pull out tray will have its own. So that'll be fun. I have a few more things I need to get for that project. Um, some binding, book binding, and uh, then we'll go with that. The I wanted to point out, if you're interested in ever doing something like this and you're wanting to do some of these covering some boxes as, or any of the projects that I get into, this is actually a really interesting book. It's Constructing and Covering Boxes by Tom and Cindy Hollander. Uh, Hollander has a website with all kinds of things, papers and stuff that you can purchase and book binding and all that sort of stuff. So if you're ever interested in that thing, I could recommend that book. That's That's been a really good one for me. And now I'll turn around and talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> so during that same auction, this spool cabinet was part of the offerings and was the main reason I ended up going to the auction. Look at the back. Isn't that gorgeous? So I, this is my holy grail. I have wanted a spool cabinet like this since, well, for at least 30 years. Isn't it gorgeous? Gorgeous! So my husband was teasing me about how I went about bidding on this. Um, you know, normally when you go to an auction, you raise your hand and or your number, your auction number, and say, yep, yep. Yep, and each time you'll raise it, and I just stuck my hand in the air <laughs> and kept it up there. I was like, I'm going home with this. It's mine. Y'all need to just give it up. Um, and finally they did, so. <laughs> and it was mine. I, right now, am using it to uh, store some of my um, samplers that I'm working on to reproduce. Uh, I first lined it with acid-free um, paper. Acid-free, what is that called? Construct, not construction paper. Anyway, um, because you, again, this is made out of wood and you don't want to put anything um, against that wood that could uh, harm your fabrics and things, but that's what I'm using this for. It, it gives me a place to stash the sampler and the things that I've chosen for it until I get ready to actually um, chart it, which will be soon, hopefully. Hopefully that's on the list. I'm trying to remember what else I'm keeping. This one actually still had all of the dividers. So at some point I am gonna use this for thread, but right now it's working out better just to have that bigger space available for um, the samplers. Anyway, I love it. I could not be happier. Uh, I was so excited. I was like a little kid. Um, it's just so gorgeous. It's in such good condition, too. And the fact that it was just four, four miles down the road, it kind of boggles my mind. I think it was just meant to be. It was my turn. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Uh, I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. I'm going to move on now and so I can turn the air conditioner back on out here because it's I'm starting to melt down. Uh, and I will see you next time. See ya.